Coming up in this video, I am going home. I've got a rum review for you. This is Dead Man's Fingers. It's a spiced rum from Cornwall. With a caveat. So if you want to know all about that, stay tuned. Hey, I'm Steve the Barman and I'm hoping these videos will help you drink, serve and enjoy better quality drinks. So if you like the sound of that, if you want to learn more, then I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss a future video, make sure you ring that bell as well, because that will notify you every time a new video goes live. Okay, so let's get on with it. This week's question of the video. I'm going a bit rum now. I'm going to get into rum. I'm not going to get into pretentious rum. I'm going to get into accessible rum. Uh, I'm going to bring you lots of rum reviews, lots of rum drinks. So my question of this video, what do you want to know about rum? Let me know in the comments below. What do you want to know about rum? Hopefully I'll answer for them and I hope, who knows, they may even form a new video. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. What do you want to know about rum? Right, let's get into it. Love this. I'm so excited by this. Caribbean rum, Cornish soul. This is Ladies and gents, is Dead Man's Fingers. Born not too far away from me in Cornwall, I'm the Red Ruth boy. This was born in the Rum and Crab Shack in St. Ives. If any of you have ever been to St. Ives, uh, right in the little harbour, the little quay there is a lovely sort of little pub up some steps. Uh, it's the Rum and Crab Shack. That's where this got uh, invented, got made. I don't know the year I'm going back because a lot of history, a lot of this has evolved. I pff, I wouldn't I can't even hazard a guess. My memory has just gone. I'm gonna say at a very, very least, at least five or six years. Uh, I might be wrong, God knows. It may even be a lot, lot longer than that, um, under the radar. But that's what kind of where it stems from. As I say it's one of the best places to eat crab and fish food. Uh there in the rum and crab shack, but they like to make their rum, you know, the corners are not just famous uh for their cider or anything like that. They love bit of rum as well. So let me tell you uh, a little bit about this. So first of all, this is a spiced rum. Um, it's kind of a flavoured rum, if you want to call it that in the loosest sense of terms. A uh, proper rum enthusiast. This is, uh, well, maybe one for you, but it's, you know, in the whole sort of um, malt whiskey thing or anything like that. It's nothing like this. I'm talking, I want to get into accessible rums uh, for me. Yes, I love my rum. I've always loved my rum. But these are the kind of rums that are going to start to turn the market and get people into uh, normal rum. So this is spiced rum, 37.5% ABV. Said originally, originally made in Cornwall down at the Rum and Crab Shack. They have done super, super well for themselves. Not sure whether they've sold out or whether they're still part of it, but this is now owned by Halewoods. It is now made uh, up in the Sovereign Distillery, Halewoods HQ, up in the Northwest, up in Liverpool. Uh, how is this essentially made? They, uh, they buy in some Caribbean rums, uh, bring it back to this country, blend to their favorite sort of um, recipe of the rums, and then they spice it up. And spice-wise, um, well, tasting notes actually, found on the website for them, this is gonna be quite interesting. Tasting notes, saffron cake, uh, they say Pedro Jimenez ice cream. That's a bit crazy. I've not seen that on the Kelly's ice cream flavour. But Pedro Jimenez ice cream. It's kind of a sherry if you don't know what Pedro Jimenez is. And then we've got nutmeg, vanilla and orange. And they also say some people maybe get a hint of pineapple in there as well. Now, I make no bones about it. I've got another... Can see another seven bottles and that's just from the last week i go through so much of this there's also a coconut rum in the flavor there's a um, in the in the range there's a coffee rum and there's a brand new as of last monday or whenever this gets released uh, start of july anyway 2019 they've now added a hemp rum i see it hemp as in uh, cbd cannabis oil all that malarkey uh, hemp rum to the range as well as i say Proper rum enthusiasts are going to go, oh, what are you talking about? That's not rum. This is the kind of product that is going to help um, not, you know, not convert people from gin. Gin is gin. People, Gin's always going to be big. It's, it's got to that point now. But rum is coming. And these are the kind of products that are going to help um, sort of grow the category, if you like. Now, while they have gone, uh, let's, let's use the word, they have gone ballistic 
with their marketing. This is all Hailwood, as I say. This is not uh, Cornish Ron, as it was back in there. Dead Man's... Oh, Dead Man's Fingers, by the way. If you want to know what that's named after, this is Cornish legend as well. Uh, Dead Man's Fingers is actually the gills on a, um, on a crab. And legend has it, fishermen, you know, how Cornish like to uh, wind people up. Legend has it that if you eat the the gills, the dead man's fingers of a crab. It's poisonous and it will kill you. Uh, so that's kind of a, that's kind of the little um, thing that they're going with, they've run with. That's their marketing, really, really kind of tongue and cheek sort of thing. But it, as a brand, I just think it works exceptionally, exceptionally well. Now, as I say, Hailwood have gone nuts uh, with the marketing. They're all over Instagram, Facebook. You know, they've plunged so much money into this. We were down at the um, the bar show. Uh, in Bive Live, um, well, at the start of J uh, July, they've got four Dodge Vipers uh, all wrapped up in the hemp and this kind of colour black and then the, the hemp they've done in a sort of purple and gold uh, um, branding, really, really cool. So they've really gone to town in this. However, however, um, supermarket wise, I have only heard and found it in Asda. Um, so they haven't got the... Um, uh, maybe a card as well, but they haven't got the supermarket, the high street market yet, but they have certainly got the on-trade market. Every major UK wholesaler has taken this on. I've been using it now for pff, about six months or so, but as I say, I've been drinking it. I've got a very old bottle um, from a few years ago uh, in my unit as well, because I, I just bought it when I was down in Cornwall. Anyway, let's get on and taste it and try it and tell you a bit about it. So, brand new bottle. Now straight away on the nose. By the way, price-wise, um, trade. I'm going trade price in this just slightly. Uh, you should be paying just slightly under twenty pounds. Um, as I say, I don't know how much Asda are actually selling it for, but I think, um, I think probably you would get better deals than under twenty pounds. I know how much my price is. Um, I pay less than twenty pounds, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't looked on a card to see how much it is, um, but I'm not sure where it's going to enter the market on uh, on the high street prices compared to your sort of Morgan Spice and your Picardies that are maybe fourteen, eighteen pounds. Are you are your premium sort of Picardie spiced and those kind of things? Um, I think this is going to be slightly more than that. It'll be up there with the red legs and all that sort of thing. Right, smelling. Very, you get the vanilla on the nose there. I get what they mean about the Pedro Jimenez. I can get the sort of sherry, but vanilla, orange, orange is the big one. Right, I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there. Right, while we get on the smell. Again, I'm gonna taste this. As I do my gins, I'm gonna taste this with an ice cube. You know, rum and ice, that's the thing to do. Neat rum, I do drink neat rum and I drink um, spiced neat rums as well because I have got a little bit of a sweet tooth. So they do kind of work with my palate really well. Mm. Yeah, wow. Vanilla. Ooh. Second wave, nutmeg. Nutmeg really comes through there. Orange bursts through. I'm not sure about the saffron cake. Can't say as I've ever had saffron cake, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. Get a tiny bit of the saffron, but for me, it's the vanilla, it's the nutmeg, the orange really comes through there. Mm. That is absolutely delightful for me. Right, the reason why I'm so excited about this, uh, going to go into a little story here. 2008, yep, 2008, Sailor Jerry was huge it was a massive massive bar call uh, even 2007 before that Sally jerry and coke Sally jerry and ginger massive massive bar call tail end of 2008 um maybe two well, maybe 2009 when it actually came out but Sailor jerry completely and utterly changed their recipe they took away the sweetness they were going towards more uh, top end cocktail bars apart from, as opposed to the mass market uh, it killed their trade just like that um, I remember where I was working that night. We was we were halfway through shift. We were sending out, um, sending out uh, Sailor Jerry and Cokes. And we didn't we we got new these new bottles came out with new labels. We didn't know it was a different flavour. We were just going there. We were getting orders coming back. This isn't what I ordered. We we're like, of course it's Sailor Jerry Coke. We were trusting the Coke. 
Then after a few minutes, we tested the rum and we'd found, and that's when we worked out that they changed the recipe. I say it just killed their trade there and then. And the reason why I'm so excited is, is I think this is one of the products, and yes, we've got red legs, yes, we've got Morgan Spice and all this, that, but there's no fun, there's no kind of a Sailor Jerry with their tattoos and the pirates and all that kind of thing going on. There was no kind of backstory, but it, I think Dead Man's Fingers has potentially got the ability to take the market by storm and be the next Sailor Jerry from 2008, because I think it's such a great product as well for that kind of market. I just think the brand, everything about it, I think is super cool. So um, I think that's good. Now, um, mixing wise, it's not kind of rum. This is the big thing for me. Rum, spiced rums are not kind of your standard gin and tonics. You know, gin's got tonic, what's rum got? Rum's got a whole cross section of things. You can use uh, tonic waters with rum. Uh, we've got a few here. Cucumber watermelon works really well with some rums. Cranberry and ginger. These guys, Lixig boys. I love the rhubarb and ginger. I love the blood orange and cinnamon. That goes really well with some rums. Uh, moving over here, lamb and what? Uh, they've brought out a spiced cola, which is really lovely. Cranberry soda, if you want to take the sweetness away. However, these are kind of my traditional ones. Uh, I've got Coke Zero there. That's pretty much classic. Um, ginger beer, I love. That's my go-to ginger beer. Um, However, I've got another rum review coming up soon where Fever Tree's ginger beer absolutely smashed it with that, better than what that did. However, uh, I love that ginger beer. That's my go-to. We've got Ting, Ting, and a lot of, all right, more sort of, um, more, I don't know how to call them, not so much spiced rums. They do work exceptionally well with spiced rums, but your kind of, your Havana's, your Plantations, your Barbada and Mount Gaze, things like that, it works very, very well with rums like that. But for me, and do you know what? I get so many, I've got a blog post about this on my website. This is uh, Dark Muscovado, Schweppes' 1783 Dark Muscovado mixer. I get so many hits on my website. So many people are searching for this. This is kind of, uh, obviously Muscovado is so sugar just works exceptionally well they are my four go-to with rums i'm going to do for all these tastings coming through i'm going rum and coke we're, we're just going to go plain old rum and coke pour a bit in there a bit of coke zero oh so good i could just drink that all night so good right so, so good. And there's lots of other flavoured Cokes coming out as well at the moment, so play about with those. Uh, I'm going to save serves for another video. I've got some rum cocktails coming up. But that is Dead Man's Fingers. I've waffled on for a bit longer than I wanted to. Go and check it out. Go and find it. Go and find your nearest pub, bar, uh, cocktail bar. Go and name drop it. I want some Dead Man's Fingers. Go and try it for yourself. Let me know what you think. I've been Steve the Barman. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time.